good meeting with the First Minister and Deputy First Minister. And I wanted to come to Northern Ireland as early as I could as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom for two very good reasons. First of all, to demonstrate my commitment to our United Kingdom, just as I've been uh, immediately to Scotland and to Wales, I wanted to come here to Northern Ireland as well. But secondly, I wanted to reassure people of my support, my party's support and our coalition government's support for the devolved institutions in Northern Ireland and for all the agreements that have been signed to make sure that we have peaceful progress here in Northern Ireland. We had a very good meeting. As well as stressing our commitment to the devolved institutions and making them work, I also wanted to stress my commitment to getting the economy here in Northern Ireland going. It is an absolutely essential task that we have a strong recovery, good growth and a strong commercial and private sector here in Northern Ireland. I also want to stress that one of the aims and ambitions I have for this coalition government that I believe can last for a full five years is I want to make sure that as we make progress in Northern Ireland, as the economy grows in Northern Ireland, as we tackle some of the deep problems in Northern Ireland, it will be a part of our United Kingdom where everybody feels that they belong. Everyone feels they are part of it. Everyone feels they have a home. But let me say this to those people who still want to wreck progress and peace in Northern Ireland, that taking part in terror will not achieve anything apart from misery. Our commitment to Northern Ireland, our commitment to the devolved institutions is absolute. Terrorism, acts of violence, acts of terrorism will achieve nothing except misery. We are committed to the peaceful progress where such big steps have been taken over these last 13, 15 years. We want that to continue. That is the future for Northern Ireland that my government wants, that people in Northern Ireland want, that the Deputy Minister and the First Minister want so badly and that we are all together committed to achieve. Happy to take a couple of questions. Prime Minister, Mark Devonhall, BBC, congratulations on your election. Uh, when you visited us over the last couple of years, you've been in campaigning mode and you've sometimes uh, made pledges that would be considered contentious within local politics here, for instance, uh, doing away with the allowances currently paid to abstentionist ship tank and peace. Now you're in government, will you make good on those pledges or will you charge them on mutual court? Well, what I've always said, including when I was campaigning in Northern Ireland, is that if I became Prime Minister, I would make sure that I dealt with the different parties in Northern Ireland, with the institutions in Northern Ireland, in a proper and impartial way. I would argue I demonstrated that in opposition over the issue of devolving policing and justice, a vital issue. I stood shoulder to shoulder with Prime Minister Gordon Brown over the importance of making that happen, even though um, what a party we are uh, allied with here in Northern Ireland took a different view. That was a demonstration of the sort of impartiality that I, will, that I have brought in the past and will bring in the future. As for the issues that you raise, those will be issues for the House of Commons. They are House of Commons matters, and the House of Commons, if it so wishes, will be able to make its own views known. Prime Minister, uh, Seamus McKee, BBC Northern Ireland, Evening Extra. Now, first of all, what's the future for the Conservative Ulster Unionist Alliance here, given its failure in the election? And secondly, on the occasion of your visit here, the first time as Prime Minister, is it a case of smiles today, cuts tomorrow? Well, let me take the first of those questions first. I'm proud of the fact that we stood in Northern Ireland. I want to see uh, politics in Northern Ireland be about the things that really matter to people in Northern Ireland. Can we build better houses? Can we have a stronger health service? Can we get the economy growing? The great advantage of the devolved settlement is that now that it is settled, now that this, uh, these arrangements are working, we should actually be in Northern Ireland, have as much normal politics as possible about the real issues that affect real people's lives. And in terms of the performance in the last election, we received 100,000 votes. We received uh, good uh, votes in, in many parts of Northern Ireland and I'm proud of the fact that we played a part in bringing that normal politics that I want to see. In terms of the deficit, let's be in no doubt about this. This is a huge threat to the whole of our economy, Northern Ireland, 
included. Look around Europe today and you can see the dangers of excessive deficits. Some people talk about action on the deficit as if it is an alternative to economic growth. It isn't. It goes with economic growth. The risk of inaction on the deficit, as the Governor of the Bank of England said, is much greater than the risk of action. Now let me be clear, Northern Ireland will not. No part of the United Kingdom will be singled out for cuts. Of course not. But we all are in this together. We all have to deal with the deficit together, but we should show respect to the different parts of our United Kingdom. And as with all the devolved areas, they are able, if they want, to delay these things until um, next year. That is important. But we're all in it together. We all have to deal with the deficit together. Can Hold on, one at a time, sir. Uh, Prime Minister, while accepting that you're pledging your support to the administration here, and so forth, people at home will be saying, what are these cuts going to mean to us in the future as in other parts of the United Kingdom? And secondly, what's your view on the corporation tax here in this part compared to the Republic? Well, taking the second question first, I do want to see a strong private sector, commercial sector-led recovery in Northern Ireland. Everybody knows, whichever party you speak to in Northern Ireland, everyone accepts that we need to have that sort of recovery. Can corporation tax, can the idea of an enter enterprise zone play a role in that? Yes, we believe that it can. And if you look at our coalition agreement with the Liberal Democrats published today, there is a clear commitment there to produce a paper on these issues and to try and resolve these issues. In terms of what getting to grips with the deficit, what does it mean to ordinary families? Well, the first point is, what does the alternative mean? If we do nothing, the dangers of higher interest rates, the dangers of our economy actually turning down are much greater. You will see on Monday how we're going to be going about the in-year reductions in spending that we believe are essential to get to grips with the deficit, and you'll see how much of that can be delivered uh, actually by cutting out uh, waste and inefficiency and doing things better. But let me just make this very important point. The government I lead, yes, it wants to deal with the deficit and get our finances under control, but it is not a government of accountants. It is a government that wants to do things differently and better and try and save money at the same time. And that, happened, that matters in Northern Ireland as in every other part of the United Kingdom. Owen, do you want to add a point on corporation tax? I've been saying now for three years that it's just not sustainable for Northern Ireland to have over 70% of its GDP dependent on public spending. And what we need to do, and I've suggested it would take 25 years to do this, is to steadily rebalance the economy by bringing up the size of the private sector and steadily bringing down dependence on public spending. But we've said it's irresponsible to do nothing. It's equally irresponsible to do anything too drastic. Thank you. One last, um, RTE. RTE. During the major years and the Blair and Brown era, relations between the United Kingdom and the Republic improved dramatically. Will you invite the Taoiseach to Downing Street? Have you done that already? And would you like, during your term in office, to see the Queen pay an official visit to the Republic? Well, the answer to both those questions is yes. I had a very good conversation with Brian Cowan, uh, I think, in the very first day. Um, I became Prime Minister a little bit earlier than I expected, but I think it, within 24 hours we'd had a very good telephone conversation, and I gather he's spoken about that today. In terms of the other issue you mentioned, yes, I think that it is, a, uh, it is it's an excellent idea. All sorts of things have to be uh, dealt with, but I think the concept is a, is a very, very um, good one. I want to see very good relations between Britain and the Republic of Ireland. They have been the those strong relations there should be under a Conservative government as well. We'll also be meeting at the forthcoming European Council if we don't meet before that. But the telephone lines will be open and I'm sure often buzzing. One last question that I think will... I, I, yes. Well, what I've said is that as with the other devolved institutions who've set their budgets for this year, if they want to delay action until next year, then that is a matter for them. That is part of the respect agenda that I believe in, that the different institutions of the United Kingdom should respect each other. But we are a United Kingdom. We are all in this together. The massive budget deficit we have is a United Kingdom budget deficit. It's a threat to all of our economies. And this idea that somehow you can do nothing about the deficit 
period. Hope that everything will get better and will go away is, as you can see in Greece and potentially in other European countries, a very, very dangerous idea indeed. OK, well, so, let's yes, say to Cameron there as he makes his first visit to Northern people, Ireland, off to Paris and uh, off to Berlin as well later to today, live there, back tomorrow at 9. Kay Burley's up next with Afternoon Live, including more from Spain uh, as the mother suspected of killing her two children is taken back to the flat in Barcelona. Details on that and the other big stories.